What we're doing in this video is installing an analog board in an Onicon System 10 BTU meter. These devices can provide temperature both on supply and return side as well as the total energy consumed in a chilled water system or even a hot water system uh, depending on uh, what you have. They also feature various ways of communication. They can be configured for BACnet or N2 communication as well as Modbus and I believe a couple of others. Uh, the manufacturers can give you a complete list on that. They can also be used to send signals to other controllers. This particular device is using the analog output that is on the board to send a signal to an input of a controller. We can see the wiring landed down here coming from that output. These analog outputs can be configured in 0 to 10 volts, 4 to 20 milliamps, or I believe even a 0 to 5 volts. I'm not 100% certain on that, but uh, there are various ways to uh, configure these. For our current application, we're going to be configuring it uh, at 4 to 20 milliamp. The analog board plugs directly into the main board of this device. If you order one of these meters and order it with the analog board already installed, you will not have to uh, do what I'm doing here. This particular meter is going to be having an upgrade and what I'm going to be doing is plugging an analog board directly into the uh, main board. Of course I have to shut off power first and it's uh, if you've ever done any kind of work on a PC or anything like that I'm sure you're pretty familiar with it. You just have to uh, remove the locking clips, slide them out of the way and literally just plug the board right into that slot. Our first step is going to be turning off our power and I'm going to go ahead and get the board installed and from there we will get into some of the configuration. This is our Onicon analog output board. You can get these either in multiple outputs or as a single output board. For our purpose, we're going to be using a multiple output board. This jumper on each of these outputs is where you would configure your system for either a zero to 10 volts output or a 4 to 20 milliamps, just depending on the, what you're needing for your application. When you order this board, if you uh, give that information to Onicon, they will be more than happy to have the jumpers in the correct position for you. However, it's always a good idea just to double check. No need to get one of these installed and have a jumper set incorrectly. And then you have to go through the uh, troubleshooting uh, to try to find out exactly what went wrong. But uh, just simply check your jumpers, make sure they're in the right position before you install the board. Here we are with our board installed into the meter. Uh, our next step is to put power back on this unit and go through the setup procedure. Now then, we have our analog output board installed in our meter. We have our wiring connected to the main back board. The next step in this process is to configure the parameters for the analog output board. If you order one of these devices and tell the uh, guys at Onicon exactly what you're needing for your particular application, they can customize the panel and have everything ready to go for you. This one is an upgrade. We've added the board. Now we need to get into program mode. And the way that we do that, if I simply press the program button on the front of the panel, I cannot get into program mode. However, if I go in here and the second button from the bottom, if I press it first, that is the program enable button. Once I press that, I have five minutes to be able to go into program mode before it defaults back out. I simply hit program. Now I am in program mode and the first option is 
uh, the communications, these devices, you know, they have uh, BACnet capability into, I believe, Modbus and a couple of other uh, ways of communicating with your system. Our application, we're simply going to be configuring the analog output board. So we need to simply scroll past all of this other configuration until we get to the analog outputs section. Uh, once again, all of this will come pre-configured. Any changes in here can make your system not work correctly. So uh, you need to be a little careful. Uh, now we are to the analog out section. Once we hit that, we simply press the up arrow of the scroll button, change that to yes. We hit our program button. We are then given channel A. These can be configured. If configured correctly, the way that they uh, suggest that you configure these, it's basically step by step. Channel A is going to be the first output, which if it's configured to the uh, supply temperature, channel B the return temperature, and so forth, it will match the labeling that is on the main board for when you do your wiring. I would recommend that you uh, follow these steps when setting up the configuration. So, uh, when you first come to this screen, it will be defaulted to none. So you will simply scroll up until you get the correct setting that you want in here. Of course, the supply temp is what we need. We press our program button. We're taken to this. Of course, we want degree Fahrenheit for our display. I press the program button again. I am taken to my offset screen. You will need to speak with an engineer or someone from Onicon to get uh, your particular settings for your application. Uh, everything may be a little different. To change a value here, I simply scroll over. We see the flashing zero. It was a flashing plus, but I just scroll over to the particular value that I want and then simply press the up button until I get the correct value. For our particular application, this is the value that I want to go with. I simply press my program button. I'm taken to my span screen. Underneath the span screen, it is the same. I simply scroll over, change whatever I need here. Channel B is the return temperature. We have this configured already. So I simply press my program button. We have our offset and our span configured. And I simply go through these doing the exact same steps, scrolling over, changing the offset, changing the values to what I need them to. And once you get all of that done, simply scroll through to the uh, option of saving. Save changes, I'm gonna press my up arrow. It changes that, y, that to a Y, which means yes. I press my program button again. It's going to pause for a minute and then it will go back to your main display screen. From here, I'm going to look at my supply temperature. I'm simply going to press my scroll button until I get up to the display that I want. Currently, I'm showing 48 degrees. Now, if I go over to my controller, I know which input I'm looking at here, so I'm simply going to press for the input I want. We're showing the exact same here. We're showing 48 degrees. I'm gonna press again, and I'm looking at uh, my other input, which is showing 53.7. I'm gonna go back over to my display. I'm gonna scroll up one more time, and you can see that I am showing in my controller exactly what I'm showing on our Onicon flow meter. If uh, this video helps you, give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. And uh, that is the basic setup of an Onicon System 10 BTU meter. Any questions, just uh, leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching.